I want to continue our market conversation now. We're joined by Sam Stovall, CFRA's chief investment strategist. Sam, great to have you here with us. So I want to start with what we've been seeing in the job market, in the labor market. We had a lot of strength come out of that jobs report on Friday. Of course, now we have this jolts number, uh, the top line figure surpassing 10 million. I'm curious to know if you think right now that markets are going to perhaps get a little bit jittery as we see some strength in the labor market, because that might mean some moves from the Fed? Well, I think that what we're looking at is an imbalance between supply and demand. With so many uh, companies reopening, especially in the hospitality and leisure area, um, they're not able to keep up with the openings by having those facilities be fully staffed. Uh, I, th I think certainly they want to go through the interview process before they just have anybody represent the company. So uh, I think it's going to take a little while before the supply-demand curve comes to equal Equilibrium, uh, but we don't really think it's going to translate into uh, you know a, a very large jolt, if you will, in um, employment data, or I should say, in prices. So uh, you know, our expectation is that the CPI number that we'll get. Thursday of this week will show that the June data point was the peak for this inflation cycle. Hey, Sam, Brian Chung here. Now, uh, let's talk about the inflation side of things. We are expected to get a consumer price index print on Wednesday. But what's been interesting is that I've been looking at everything within the context of what's been going on in bond yields. And it's been a bit noisy and difficult to tell if the movement that we've seen in bond yields coming down since the spring has been the result of a changing uh, narrative over inflation. So what do you expect to see on Wednesday? And how do you think that even just the rise up about three basis points today on the 10-year is maybe affecting how markets are pricing uh, that inflation risk in? Sure, Brian. Well, when we saw the uh, the ten year yield uh, drop below one point two percent and approach one point one, I think investors got very nervous, wondering whether the bond market was a canary in the coal mine and that uh, the Delta variant was going to shut down global economic expansion once again. But I think that that fear really has subsided, and so the 10-year yield has started to creep a little bit higher as we move forward. Our expectation is we'll see it at about 125 on average for this month, and then rise up to about 145 uh, to 150 by the end of the year. So interest rates are likely to just creep higher as we move into the uh, increased likelihood of tapering to start in the fourth quarter of this year. But I think when it comes to CPI, whether you look to headline numbers, 5.1% is our expectation for Thursday versus the 5.4% that we saw last month. We're also likely to see the core rate uh, have peaked in June. Uh, so Overall, I think that PPI will give us a preliminary view uh, and then confirmation on Thursday with the CPI. You know, Sam, mentioning that Delta variant, we have seen markets really be a little bit volatile. We've seen some record highs right now. The markets are retreating from the record highs that we had seen on Friday. So not too long ago that we were talking about record highs in the markets. But again, the Delta variant continuing to weigh and cause pressure right now on equities. Uh, two part question for you here. One, how much do you think the Delta variant is going to present that really kind of headwind for the markets going forward, particularly as we go through into the back to school season, which some folks are highlighting as a potential uh, cause of even more spikes of the virus around the country. And two, what should the defensive plays be to protect against that downside risk? Sure. Well, I, I think that the uh, explosion in new cases, you know, 100,000 a day we're seeing just recently because of the Delta variant uh, is something that is causing concern because I believe that uh, a lot of people feel that once we get back into the back to school season, uh, once parents can then go and re-enter the workforce, that was going to be a uh, positive. Uh, but, you know, if we find that schools are going to go back to being um, at least partially remote, then that could be uh, a big problem for getting that uh, job supply demand balance uh, once again. So I think that it's one of those things that we just have to keep an eye on. Wall Street does like to climb a wall of worry. And just because we're down today by um, you know a fraction, uh, I would tend to say uh, versus the new high that we saw on Friday, it's not that big of a concern right now. 
Hey, Sam, in that wall of worry, how much does the Federal Reserve factor into that? Because it seems like they've been trying to give markets as much heads up as they possibly can on the taper process, which could uh, looks like it's likely to begin later this year. We heard from the Atlanta Fed president saying he would like to see something begin sometime in the October to December range. Do you think that that's already priced in those expectations or is there still the hawkish risk uh, as the Fed heads into its Jackson Hole meeting at the end of this month and then maybe into their September meeting? I think we won't really hear anything about tapering at the end of the Jackson Hole meeting. I think that the uh, Fed will keep that for the September meeting um, and that we probably will start to see tapering take place in Q4. I think a lot of the Fed presidents who have been coming out talking about tapering really is a, uh, uh, what is a trial balloon uh, to, in a sense, let the public uh, be more and more aware of what is likely to happen. I don't think the Fed wants to be behind the curve. Uh, some people say they already are, but I think that by taking a, a longer period in which to taper would actually be good because it won't be a very sharp and sudden rip uh, that uh, could happen if they did wait further. Our belief still is that they're not going to raise rates until at least the fourth quarter of next year and possibly still wait until first quarter of 2023. So, Sam, uh, we have time for just one more here with you. Curious to know where you think opportunity lies right now. What are you looking at? What plays are attractive to you right now? Well, you know, I like to go back in time, look and see how history performs. And uh, August is one of those months where it's the third worst month of the year, not only in terms of price change, but also in terms of volatility. Uh, usually the defensive areas tend to do relatively well. Uh, like today, what we're seeing, healthcare doing fairly well, along with consumer staples. Believe it or not, technology tends to do relatively well. My concern is that we are uh, now the 10th the longest stretch meaning 10th longest period uh, between declines of 5% or more since World War II. Uh, and so it's simply a matter of time before we have some sort of digestion of gains. And history also says that if you have six new highs or more in July, we tend to digest those gains in the following August. So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a pickup in volatility, but I would use that for a buying opportunity as we move later into the fall, because then I would tend to say we'll probably end up seeing an improvement in the cyclical and value stocks all over. All right, we'll leave that there. Sam Stovall, CFRA's Chief Investment Strategist, thanks so much for joining us.